All right, everybody, welcome back to the KSR YouTube channel. It's another day in the shop, but today we are working on this beautiful machine owned by Lee, which this weekend, it's the first race of the Trans Am season. So we've had the car in here doing some work to it, getting it ready to meet some of the new rules for 2022. A little bit different weight classification for our class, a little bit different restrictor options. Like for example, if we run uh, the factory gear in the car, we're allowed a larger restrictor because it's a really long gear. So it kind of keeps the engine out of its power range. If we were to run the stock engine, we could run with no restrictor at all. So we've got a lot of things to weigh out. The black car that's unfortunately still stuffed over there in the corner because we still have not gotten our shocks back from the guy in California. Long story, let's not get into that right now. But anyways, that may be an option to run possibly with no restrictor in it because it has a stock engine. It's funny how the rules kind of work out that when we originally did the built engine for the car, it was an advantage to have the built engine and make some extra power. But the rule makers saw that advantage and reeled it back in. It's not just us. They've tried to balance the class for all kinds of cars. I mean, there's Porsche GT3 Cup cars, Lamborghinis are allowed, uh, Corvettes, C6 and C7 Corvettes, as well as the newer Camaros. All kinds of different things. Ferrari Challenge cars. They're trying to bring a lot of cars together for a... Uh, the Super GT class, which so far the entry list at Sebring is kind of light, but hopefully some people out there, maybe you, come race with us. Because we like racing everybody, it's fun. Race cars are fun. T-shirt available at winwithksr.com. Anyways, we're gonna get cranked into this thing. You can see the guys are working on the back hatch, which I'll show you why in just a second. All right, well, while you're here, please subscribe to the channel. Give us a like, give us a comment. We try to get down there and get into the comments and reply back, which there's been some great comments going on and some great conversations going on in the comments. So thank you guys for all that. And thank you for being here and watching the channel. It's uh, pretty awesome to see everybody tagging along and helping us out, keep the channel growing. We're gonna keep bringing you at least stuff that we think is cool content, like taking the Viper down to Sebring this weekend for the Trans Am series. But back to what's going on with the car. It's heavy. It's, it's very heavy. <laughs> of course, you can't tell really what's going You just see two black shadows back there working on the car. But for this year, we're allowed to be a little bit lighter. There's not a whole lot of weight left in this car without doing a whole lot of work, like taking all of the wiring out of the entire car and rewiring the whole car. As you might imagine, that's a lot of work. Lot, lot. So we're not super interested in doing that. Not yet anyways. But one area that we hope is a pretty quick change is we have switched to a plastic rear window on the on another hatch. So on this hatch, we actually took a hole saw to it in some spots and trimmed out some weight. Depending on how much that thing weighs, we may do a little more. You think it's that heavy? It's that heavy. Well, come over here and let's stand on the scales. Let me see if I've, let me see, I mean, can y'all get through? I mean, that's everything out of it, right? I mean, it looks to, it looks very similar to the other one to me. Uh, what is, what is that? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Probably a tag light or something. Yeah, you got the, I mean. Are they on? Yes. Okay, we're good to go? Yep. Does not matter? No, stand on it. Four hundred, five hundred, and fifty. Let's call it fifty-eight pounds. Five fifty-eight. All right. So, can you set that down gently? No, don't throw it. Lee might be watching this. Gently. 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 Now you're gonna pick that one up and be like, oh, actually not that I'm much. I'm saying 40 pounds. Oh no, this is light. 
40 pounds? No. no. Not 40 pounds. 40 pounds. What's the, hold on, what's the guess? What's the guess? 40 pounds. I'm going. He's 40? I'm going to go. I was optimistically hoping for 10. Uh, I'm going to go 19.2. 19. I mean, you're right in the middle of everybody, so you could be. Five forty-three, forty-four. 43, 44. Wow, that's uh, 14 pounds? Yeah, 14, 15 pounds is what it's, it keeps flirting with 543. Uh, hey, 15 sounds better. 15 sounds better. I was hoping for 10. So that's awesome because that glass is high weight. Something's loose inside of the hatch. But yeah, that's uh, pretty exciting. So obviously a very worthwhile switch. Lee wasn't 100% uh, sure because Lee does like his race cars to be nice looking and pretty. And the new hatch, it needs some paint work. It's got some scuffs and scratches and different stuff. So time for us to get back to work putting that other hatch on. Then we will scale and align it. And then hopefully get it to the dyno. It's asking a lot. We don't have a lot of time today. I gotta run some dyno runs on it to make sure that we meet class rules for the horsepower restrictors and all that stuff. Which really we're just turning in information at this point during the season. We give them our information and they decide what they want to do to adjust us at later races based on what happens in the early races of the season. So, probably set up a time lapse here while we bolt the trunk back on and the wing and all that other stuff. Actually, I'm kind of curious what the wing weighs. So I might set it across the scales and weigh that. But yeah, get this thing done and back on the scales and away we go. Thanks for following along. All right, so we're back with another talk over time lapse segment, this time with the Viper. And what's kind of happening here is we run into some alignment problems with putting the different hatch onto Lee's car. So, the, the red car has been tapped off the wall a couple of times, so admittedly, the quarter panel alignment is not what it used to be when the car was stock. So we have to do a little bit of tweaking on the bolts for the new hatch so that the alignment is about as straight as we can get it and about as equal on each side of the car. You may also see that we have the scale pads out and the dark gray square that's on top of the scale pad that is actually two pieces of eighth inch thick steel that I put grease between. Now it sounds kind of weird, but what that does is when the car is set down upon those, it allows for the suspension to move freely without the tire binding up by sticking to the floor or sticking to the scale pad. And in doing that, it gives us accurate uh, and repeatable weights on each of the uh, each corner of the car so you can see we've also got the blue jug out and what we're going to do here in just a minute is to pump out all of the fuel that we can get out of the car because the weights that we have to weigh are at the end of the race you know theoretically with barely any fuel in the car so we're going to go in and we're going to pump out every ounce of fuel that we can get so that we're doing accurate measurements here because we don't want to do things without a purpose. You know, we want to make sure we're pumping out to get the car as light as we can possibly get it. The cool shirt box that's in the car is full of water so that that's accurate. And I get in the car here in a little bit with a little bit of extra ballast weight to simulate, you know, Lee having his safety gear on. He and I weigh very close to the same, so that helps out when doing this procedure. <clears throat> All right, so we have dropped it on the scale. With our back hatch, we're still not light enough. We're basically 32.92 with Lee's weight, and we can be 32.75. So that's what we have to weigh at the end of the race with all the fuel pumped out of the car. So we might just see if we can get a little bit more weight out of her somewhere. I know there's weight to be had, just whether or not we want to put the time into getting it out because we still have to dyno the car and check the alignment. But that'll be 
where we wrap this video up tomorrow because right now I'm going home. So stay tuned for some dino runs. All right, so we're back the next morning. You can see we've got the scale pads under the car. And one thing that uh, actually took me a little while to learn when we first started doing this stuff is the scale pads have to be level, especially for a car with road racing style springs in it that are really, really high rate. I forget the rate we actually run in these, but I, I wanna say they're like 1300 fronts and 800 on the rears, something like that. But in a drag race car with softer springs, the level pads don't make as much of a difference. But when it comes to this, you can be off an eighth of an inch on the scale pad heights and that drastically changes the corner balance on the car because we're actually trying to balance the car on a diagonal axis across each way. So we want this axis to weigh as much as the, the left front and the left or in the right rear. So, you know, it's all part of doing this road race thing and making them handle right. And we can tune that a little bit to make the car turn one direction better than the other, which we'll actually do for Sebring because Sebring is primarily all of the hard turns are right-hand turns. So we'll stagger it a little bit to turn right. So that'll make turn 17 better, turn 16 better, turn seven better, turn 10, turn 13. All those corners will be better. And since there's more of those, you wanna set up to try and gain a little bit in the right-hand corners over the left-hand corners because there's not as many of them. So on that note too, we adjust camber. And the thing with a Viper is you can kind of see this slug right here, this shim or whatever you want to call it. We call them slugs. That is replaceable. So these are lettered. And what we do is for each track that we've already been to and we've got some good data on, we have the slug package that we run in each corner to get the camber where we want it. So we've already swapped those in. We're going to double check the measurement of the camber. And then we will also finalize the alignment while we're sitting here on the scales. And then we should be able to roll this thing back around onto the dyno, check our cross weights, because we will have to adjust that a little bit. Changing camber, as you might imagine, kind of changes the cross weights of the car. So then we'll go back in and tweak on springs to get that squared away. But then we'll be ready to roll it back on the dyno. And the dyno process is a little different for this car compared to other ones we do. So. Stay tuned and we'll show you that. So yeah, here we go. All right, well now that we kind of have a little bit more of our other stuff wrapped up, got the scale pads leveled like we talked about earlier, you can actually see there's a blue piece of tape above the right front wheel on the car. And I put that on each corner. And what I'm gonna do, which I think I've already done by this point of the video, is I go around and I measure camber at each corner and I write that down. Like I said earlier, we kind of already have an idea of how to get our camber back to where we want it because we already have kind of a proven setup for taking the car down to Sebring. Sebring is the track we have by far run the most. So we've got the most data at Sebring. We've got a pretty good setup for showing up at Sebring and being fast. So if you recall the grease plates that I was talking about earlier, another area where that really helps is doing an alignment stuff. So we actually put the race ramps on top of the grease plates and Drew is eyeing the toe settings while I am under the car adjusting. So this process goes pretty quick because the suspension is not bound up. And now that we've got that done, it's time to get this thing around to the dyno and then into the trailer and head to the track. All right, well, we are done with the scaling and the alignment. We actually got within about five pounds of our minimum weight, which we're having to guess a little bit because we don't have things like the water bottle in the car that Lee uses for hydration during the sessions. We also don't have an exact weight on what Lee weighs with some of his new racing gear. So kind of guessed a little bit on that, but I think we're within about five pounds of the minimum weight, which is uh, cool because we weren't sure we were quite going to be able to get there, but we did. So I'm going to take it out for a little quick drive just to make sure the brake pedal feels normal. And then we're going to put it on the dyno, make some rips to get our 
dyno run verification data for Trans Am. And this thing's in the trailer and headed to Sebring. Woohoo! All right, so for the dyno runs that we have to do for Trans Am, as you might imagine with a professional racing organization, they want you to be a little bit more professional than just chucking the car up there, turning in a run, and them assuming that it's good. So obviously they're trying to prevent teams from cheating or manipulating their results on the dyno. So we have a whole checklist of things that we have to go through and fill out to make the dyno runs. They want the tires at 30 PSI, they want the hood up, they want the engine up to full operating temperature, and then they want you to make three consecutive runs back to back to back to then take an average of your dyno runs and then to make sure that you're not just writing numbers down or manipulating or photoshopping your dyno results, you have to actually turn in the files from the dyno. We have to write down the weather conditions. We have to correct to standard correction, or not standard correction, SAE correction. Yeah, so there's a Society of Automotive Engineers correction factor that we have to use for the dyno. And we also have to, what else do we have to do? Uh, there's an RPM sweep that we have to, to do for the test. So basically they want as much information as they can get so that the assumption is, or the goal is, for racers to not be able to manipulate their dyno results. Sure, it's possible to still do it, but it's not really our style here at KSR. We're going to do the test as accurately as we can do it. So we'll make the runs real fast, and it's, I think it's kind of neat the way, at least we've done these in the past. Literally, it's run the thing to red line, hit the brakes, let the brakes off on the dyno, run it back up the red line again, fourth gear. That's another thing that's mandated. We have to do it in fourth gear or whichever gear is closest to one-to-one, -to -one, which in our current transmission setup is fourth gear. So it's gonna be three quick pulls. Hopefully everything agrees. We don't have any kind of weird anomaly in the dyno runs and then we'll be done. So let's get this thing strapped down and you will get to hear the V10 in all its glory, making pulls right up to the red line, three quick times back to back. So stay tuned. I think it sounds great. So let me know if you think it sounds awesome too.
All right, well, that's gonna conclude the dyno run stuff we have to do for Trans Am. That was fun. Makes lots of cool noises. But it's time for us to unload this thing and get it in the trailer and get uh, Drew headed for Sebring. There you go. Let's get out of here. Let's go racing. We've actually won Sebring a few times, so maybe we can do it again. I never say we're gonna do it just because I just don't, I don't like to be that cocky. So we're gonna show up, do our best, and uh, hopefully we'll come home with another win. So, ready to go? I'm ready to go. Sweet. Thanks again for watching. See you guys next time.